Riley Green, Spencer Torkelson, Roberto Campos, Tigers odds for the season, spring training game recaps, a complete weekend look over today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Monday, April 4th, 2022. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day, free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Uh, this episode is brought to you by betonline.net. They have you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Okay, we're back. We're back in better than ever, baby. Uh, heck of a, a weekend. Heck of a weekend. Lots going on in the, the Detroit Tigers world. I guess we can kind of just start with Riley Green because that's going to be the most pressing issue. That's going to be the one that everybody's going to want to talk about the most and is by far the biggest news within the organization. So Riley Green. Oh, Riley Green. Riley Green takes a foul ball off the foot, is will miss what is presumed to be six to eight weeks. Now, uh, it sounds like he's going to get reevaluated in about three, give or take a week. Uh, however, six to eight seems to be the early guesstimate by beat writers, people within the organization alike. Uh, everybody seems to be on the wave of, you know, probably about six to eight. This blows. That's that's really the only only way to put it. This blows. Um, Riley Green is is him. Riley Green is, is the dude. Spencer Torgelson's great, and we'll get to him. And he is fantastic. One of the best prospects in all of baseball. One of the best pure hitting prospects we've seen in a while. Right. Fa- absolutely stoked that he is going to to be playing games for the team this year. But Riley Green, Riley Green is is like I said, man. He's him. Like Riley is is different, man. His his potential is so unbelievably high. Uh, he he's a dude that that could be one of the better hitters in the league while being a plus defensive center fielder. Can't get too much more valuable than that, as we've seen in dudes like. Ronald Acuna Jr., who did play some right, but has also played a little bit of center. Sound a little bit like Riley Green. I'm not saying Riley Green's going to be Ronald Acuna Jr. That's very lofty expectations. I'm just saying the the value that Green has the potential to provide is higher than anybody in this organization. Pitcher, hitter, at any level, highest ceiling, pure ceiling in the entire organization, Riley Green, and it's not even a debate. And, and it was supposed to be, you know, the torque and green that they announced after the injury, which is kind of like kind of sucks. Honestly, they were like, hey, by the way, they were both supposed to get called up. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that makes everybody feel better. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Like, you know what I mean? Like that. I mean, oh, what a gut punch. So Riley Green's out six to eight. He still has plus twelve hundred rookie of the year odds, according to betonline.net, which is the fifth highest in baseball. Uh, he's only behind Wit, I believe, is one. Julio is two. Torque is three. Adley is four. And then Riley Green still at the fifth odds, even after the injuries at a plus, like I said, plus 1,200. Uh, but the biggest question then going forward becomes what happens? Ugh, got a hair in my mouth. What happens with the center field situation? That's now the, the talk of the town, right? And there were some rumors yesterday, as you're listening to this, and today, uh, Sunday and Monday, that the Tigers were in on the trade market, the trade market for center fielders for some outfield help. There are still a few free agent outfielders out there, but I'm not sure any of them are really everyday center fielders for a team that wants to be competitive. I think at that rate, they'd probably just stick with it. So let's just go through it really quick. So Derek Hill, also injured. 
um, which is becoming a reoccurring theme with Derek Hill, which is pretty frustrating to be honest with you. Uh, I'm sure it is for him too. I'm not, you know, not, not in a selfish way. It's not frustrating. I, I feel bad for the kid, but uh, it, it does pile up pretty quickly. He, he see, he's been hurt a lot since, uh, since getting called up. So he's going to start the season out on the IL. His doesn't seem to be too serious though. So we expect him to get a lot of reps in center field before Green comes back. And after he comes back, uh, Victor Reyes, that's the immediate option. And he, Victor Reyes, will make the team. Victor Reyes back in Detroit for yet another opening day. The Rule 5 pick that that just won't go away. And I guess go away is to, like, get out of here. It's not that I'm like, oh, get Victor Reyes off my organization. Like, he sucks. It's not it at all. It's just wild to me that this dude was a a rule five pick and what I just got a tweet. We just got Austin Meadows for Isak Paredes. What just happened? What just happened? The Detroit Tigers have acquired Austin Meadows from the Tampa Bay Rays in exchange for Isak Paredes and a competitive balance B pick in the 2022 draft. Uh, let's, let's take a selfie together. Ready? This happened while we were recording. Oh, you can see my horrible setup that way. Actually. No, we're going to do it this way. Happened while we were recording. Yay. Okay. That, I mean, okay. Well, there's the center field situation. Bingo, bingo. (laughs) Austin Meadows. None of this even matters anymore. None of this matters. Uh, nothing I've said. Derek Hill, when he comes back, sure, we'll get some playing time. Victor Reyes will probably still make the team. They're going to go to 28 men. Daz Cameron, I was going to talk about. No chance. Uh, still got a lot of offensive stuff to, to figure out. Eric Haas will play corner outfield. He will get reps in corner outfield. My brain is going a million miles an hour now. Akil Badu is really the only one that I was like, oh, you know, he'll, he'll probably play a lot more center now when they'll give those reps to Eric Haas, et cetera. But, um, but now, uh, this is, this is wild. I, I've never experienced anything like this. where like in the middle of recording a show. Something happens. Um, well, we're going to get a live reaction here. I guess. I guess that's what is about to happen. This is fantastic. This is a great move. I, I, I mean, obviously we need an another outfielder. That was painfully obvious. If we want to be competitive, we need another outfielder that can start every day with Riley Green hurt. Absolutely. Right? This is, I'm trying to tweet happened mid-recording. Right? So now you'll know. You Behind the scenes, this is what's happening right now. This is insane. I... I'm having a hard time calming down. Um, uh, like I said, like I've been doing Red Wings for for over a year now, and I've been doing Tigers for almost a year now, and I have never experienced anything like this happen. Well, let's get into Austin Meadows. Let's get into Austin Meadows, who is now a Detroit Tiger. First off, he's now in the same organization as his brother, Parker Meadows is in the tiger system he's in single a one of the fastest players in the entire organization right like uh like he had had a little trouble with the bat we've talked about him before in the spring but it is kind of cool just on a like get this out of the way early type of thing uh just kind of kind of funny hey he's with his brother now um i i'm dumbfounded this is not something I expected to happen. We have acquired, I'm trying to make sure I'm not getting like buried and that this is a real account. We have acquired Austin Meadows from the Tampa Bay Rays. Okay. So let's go over what we gave up first, right? Let's go over what we got rid of. Um, Yeah, we'll, we'll go over what Isak and the loss of Isak and what that could potentially mean as well as the, the competitive balance picks and all that. Really quick, though, first, I do have to tell you all about BetOnline.net still. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. Find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters. The Masters, baby. 
odds, podcasts, and reviews all for different leagues this season. Bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Uh, a lot of this episode, I my whole plan, I, I spend like um, over, I spend quite a bit of time prepping for these shows, right? And now this is just all out the window. This is done. There is no prep anymore. Because this just happened. Um, but the plan originally was to do some betonline.net. We use their odds. And, and there's some pretty interesting odds for the upcoming season for a lot of players on the team and for the team itself. Odds to win the World Series, etc. So either today, in if we have time now, or tomorrow, we will go over set odds. So uh, betonline, great, for real, great website. Bet online where the game starts. Okay. Welcome back to segment two, everybody. Holy wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So um oh my goodness gracious. This is cr- I I'm sorry. I really need to just get to break down the trade. I'm I'm sure this is very frustrating because if I was a listener, I, I'm sure I would be like, hey, like just get to the point, stupid. But this is this is wild. I mean, this is a huge trade. This is a this is a big boy trade. Um, and it just happened in the middle of of my recording. So first we're gonna talk about the, what we gave up. Because there is Isak Paredes has been a, a prospect that this organization has been pretty pumped about for a while. And this fan base has been pumped about for a while, right? Uh, he first came up in 2020, was called up in the same day, all at the same time. Mize, Scooble, Paredes. Forever inked in history together. Those three dudes, right? And it's just, it's, wow. It's crazy to me that they just completely bailed and first off i well, this is not first off this is like 12th off isak to tampa i mean isak paredes might become unbelievable now because that's what the rays do it really it really does terrify me whenever the rays trade for anybody on your team it's like okay well he's probably going to be really good now the competitive balance pick um first off trading draft picks weird not something that's usually uh, linked with baseball. Uh, but the competitive balance thing and the new CBA and all that, there are some stipulations in which it is possible. This is clearly one of them. So competitive balance B, that probably would have been what? Competitive A is after the first round, B is after that. So that would have been a pick in like the 40s or 50s range. Um, pretty sizable, I would say. And then Paredes, again, uh, a guy that, a lot of people have been really high on, um, but it, it, at the at the same time, Austin Meadows. I mean, he's not even free agent eligible until twenty twenty five. This is not an expiring deal, dog. Like this is, we have Austin Meadows on our team for the next three years. I think he has three years of service time. So now our outfield of the future is this is crazy. This is so crazy. Our outfield of the future is now Riley Green, Akil Badu, Austin Meadows. Can you feel me? That's a that's a trio. That's a that that's a trio, man. Austin Meadows can ball, baby. Let's look at his numbers from just last season. Well, let's just look at his whole career. It's only three full seasons in the majors, right? 2019, first full season, over four F4. My phone is blowing up, and I'm going to respond to these people in half an hour because I got a damn job to do, okay? <laughs> this is for the people. Um, my... I'm sorry. My brain is still, holy cow, this is sick. This is so wild. So he had, he had an over four war, his first full season in the majors in 2019. 
33 homers. If you're an RBI guy, he almost had 90 RBIs. I am not, as you all know. Some of y'all don't like me for it, whatever. Uh, 9.1 walk percentage, 22K percentage, 268 ISO as a rookie. As a 24-year-old rookie in 2019, he had 268 ISO. He, I mean, I mean, like Austin Meadows can ball, baby. A 922 OPS as a 24-year-old rookie in 2019. Austin Meadows is a baller. And it's not an expire. I keep saying this is not an expiring deal. Austin Meadows can be your center field or at least in your outfield for three seasons. Everyday center fielder? I mean, once Green comes back, probably not. Probably not. But is he still? A- I-, I mean, what? Look, okay, let, let's just go through each position, okay? I'm trying to go a million miles an hour here. Defensive runs saved, right? We talk about DRS for being a solid defensive stat while when trying to assess, you know, because errors and, and defense is so hard to grade. DRS is a, is a decent all-encompassing stat, right? In left field, left field. 2019 plus three, 2020 plus three, 2021 minus one. 2018 in his shortened first stint in the majors, minus three. But since that first shortened season, in his first full season since, plus three, plus three, minus one. Center field has not played center field since 2019 for starters. And even then, he only played 13 innings and was a minus one. He was a minus three in 2018 and then in right field he's pretty much minus across the board minus four minus eight zero minus two so total in the outfield he's a he's a minus defender at right and center and like a barely positive defender in left okay what does this mean for the current status of the outfield that's now the big question because Austin Meadows can hit. Is he the best defender in the world? We just went over it. Absolutely not. But he he can hit well enough to have a, he can be a four win player as a rookie. Four win player as a, as a rookie, man. First full season over four wins. 2020 shortened season only played in 36 games, obviously negative 0.2. Then 2021 last year uh, had, was a two win player. Slugging percentage went down uh, quite a bit from the 2019 season, and the OBP went down about 40, 50 points as well. Um, The batting average, for all you people that like batting average out there, dipped a little bit. He had a 772 OPS in 2021. That was still a 113 WRC+, plus, so he's still 13% better than league average last year, even at a 772 OPS. I know I'm using WRC+, plus and OPS. That's not quite the same thing, but you get the point. Still a an above league average, pretty significantly above league average hitter when it comes to weighted runs created. Um, I, this is This is crazy. This is wild, man. The Rays considered moving Austin Meadows all spring, and Detroit, which really wants to compete this year, went out and got him, as Tampa Bay Times first reported. Tigers starting with Spencer Torgelson in the big league. Riley Green will join when healthy. Good future in Detroit. That's via Jeff Passan. Uh, the Tigers have three season of control for 26-year-old Meadows before he reaches free agency. Paredes, 23, can play all three infield positions. We, we'll talk about Paredes ourselves. We don't need Jeff to break down Isak Paredes. Um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, this is... I, I, I love how I spent like two hours prepping for this show and now it's just all out the window. We're not going to talk about any of it. I'm glad that it, it it came in at the beginning of the recording, at least, though, right? It would suck if I like just finished and then this happened, or if I was like 20 minutes deep, that would suck too. So I'm, I'm this is crazy. This is wild. I, I, Austin Meadows is a Detroit Tiger. Austin Meadows is a Detroit Tiger. So now our, like I said, our outfield now consists of. For the future, Riley Green in center, 
Badu and Meadows in the corners. That's your outfield for at least the next three years if you want it. At least. Longer, if you so please. Extend Meadows, and then the other two, you just have, you still have five years of Badu and six of Riley. That right there, those three dudes in an outfield, that's what we call a playoff outfield. Not only is that a playoff outfield, I would venture to say that that outfield has the potential to be one of the best outfields in Major League Baseball. And I know this just happened. You're like, wow, he's being super dramatic. Look at this guy. He's just freaking out. A trade happens and he loses his mind. Nah, I'm, I'm not saying they are currently. I'm not saying that Riley Green is a rookie and, and all this is just going to be like, like a, an incredible best outfield in baseball right away. But in two years' time, this could be one of the best outfields in baseball. And that's that's objective. That's a fact, Jack. Wow. All right, let, let's keep going. We're going to get – I said we were going to get to Paredes like eight times, and we never really did. So we'll get into that. Uh, I do have to t- take a quick break. First off, thanks for making Lockdown Tigers your first listen every day. Listen to Lockdown MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia. Maybe he'll talk a little bit about Isak Paredes. He's going deep on the MLB stars at tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, just like this one. Uh, I also got to tell y'all about Built Bar. Built Bar. Amazing flavors. If you haven't tried the Puffs, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy. They have yummy cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. They're all so good. They're going to be your new favorite. All Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, Puffs included. That's 100% real chocolate. Low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bars with these. They are better. Straight up. High protein, low calorie. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 4 net carbs, 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar. You're talking about 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They are all delicious, and new flavors are coming out all the time. They think a flavor might be good. They'll make it. It will be delicious, and it will be good for you because at Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first and then figure out how to make it healthy. And I don't know how, but they pull it off every single time. So go to Built.com right now. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off of your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, everybody, we're back. Segment three at Locked on Tigers. Uh, what what a day. This is... Th- Austin Meadows is a Detroit Tiger. As of about... We're 23 minutes into this recording, so probably about 15 minutes ago, maybe even 18, 18 minutes ago, Austin Meadows became a Detroit Tiger. We've broken down Meadows, talked about the player we're going to get with him. Uh, I mean, this is instantly again has the potential to be one of the best hitters on your team you just added austin meadows to a lineup that featured jamer candelario spencer torkelson javier baez i mean akil badu jonathan scope you just added austin meadows to a lineup that already included those players what are we talking about I can't even talk about these odds of the Tigers, you know, making the playoffs and winning the pennant or winning the division and everything because they need to be updated now. Because you, 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 you best believe they're a lot higher now. You best believe. This is my phone is is this is unbelievable. Austin Meadows is a Detroit Tiger. Isak Paredes. Uh, people have always been very impressed with Isak's bat-to-ball skills and his ability to feel the strike zone, even right when he got called up, even in the minors. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a, I'm a nerd. I, I watch minor league baseball every single day when it's in season as well. Isak's always had that. He's always had a great feel for the strike zone, great bat-to-ball skills, the ability to put the ball in play. The problem is Isak Paredes, uh, 
it, it really became apparent once he got called up for the first time in 2020 and has been an underlying problem, maybe even overlying clearly ever since uh, the power I don't know if it's the way his like his batting stance is or the way his swing is or what. The power is absent. It is it is not to be found. And it's not just home run power. We've seen plenty of people have have great successful baseball careers without home run power. He has no power p- period. I I mean you're talking about you know getting around and and really I don't want to say get the barrel on the ball but but you, you're talking about a guy who would who would really get on a pitch and it would go to sh- you know a, a line out to short like a soft liner to short, or or ground balls could not get through the infield like really really has has struggled the last two years especially year and a half I guess with finding the power within his stroke. And that is what the Tampa Bay Rays think they can do. Because he's not a Detroit Tiger anymore. Because Austin Meadows is. Austin Meadows is a Detroit Tiger. So what, let's talk about lineups then. Where does Austin Meadows fit in? He's got to be in the top part of the lineup. I would imagine. Do you even, like, you can mess around and lead Austin Meadows off if you wanted to. You could. Why not? What would that look like? Let's just go through and, and, and like, like, let's just shoot some stuff, right? If he was lead off, it would be Meadows leading off, what, Grossman probably two, Baez three, Candy four, Miggy five. Then you got Akil Badu batting six, Scopey seven. Oh, well, where does Spencer Torgerson bat? See, like, this is a good problem to have. This is a problem we have not had in over half a decade. This lineup is now pretty deep. This is a pretty deep lineup. This is wild. We just got Austin Meadows for Isak Paredes. Three years of Austin Meadows for Isak Paredes. I'm... uh, this is awesome. This is awesome. And that's no disrespect to Paredes at all. I hope he I hope he kills it. I hope he has a great career. But in the grand scheme of things, when you're talking about a, a, a guy who has produced is 26 with three years of control and has put up a four win over 900 OPS season in his three full seasons in the major. Really two, because 2020 was a 36, he played in 36 games. So he has played two full major league seasons. And in one of them, he, he was a four over a four win player that had an over 900 OPS. And last year, while it wasn't that good, he was still what I say, 780 OPS and a two win player. What are we talking about? That this is a no brainer trade. This is a, this is a unbelievable move by the Detroit Tigers. Unbelievable. I don't I don't care if it was Hinch. I don't care if it was if it was George Lombard. I don't care if a Vila mastermind the whole thing. Whoever did it deserves a ton of credit. I don't care if it was if it was Chris Illich. If Chris Illich did this himself, which didn't happen, but if he did, give him the credit. Whoever masterminded this, whoever was behind this move, you're a genius. And you deserve credit. Because this is a phenomenal move for the Detroit Tigers. Where do you fit everyone in this lineup now? This is a good lineup. This is a playoff caliber lineup. It is. It is. This You're talking about a, a guy like Jonathan Scope is a great example. You bring in Jonathan Scope in 2020. He instantly becomes what? Your second best hitter? Because Jamer did really well in the last three quarters of 2020, right? Your second best hitter in 2020 was Jonathan Scope, who loves Scopey to death, is a plus bat, is, is a good hitter, right? He was your second best hitter in 2020. Now, there's an argument Jonathan Scope bats like eighth in your lineup. That's A, how much you've improved over the last two years, and B... Just shows you how good this lineup is now, period. 
Meadows has got to be in the top part of that. But I, maybe you just move Grossman down. Maybe maybe my bias of Robbie Grossman and just having a high OBP, high walk guy at the top of my lineup is blinding me from the fact that he probably it might make more sense to make him a five or a six hitter. But also, I really like that at the top still. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could do Grossman one, Meadows two. You could do Grossman one, Baez two. Jamer three, Meadows four, Miggy five, Badu still six hitting them though. I mean, that's, that's, well, I guess maybe even not, but Torkelson seven, probably early on Torkelson will bat down in the lineup. Torkelson seven, Badu six, Torque seven, Scopey eight, Barnhart nine. Does that sound like a playoff lineup or what? It does. And especially when you pair it with the rotation of Erod, Mize, Scooble, Manning, and Michael Pineda. And you pair that with a bullpen that features Andrew Chafin when he's healthy again, who had a sub-2 ERA last year, Gregory Soto, Michael Fulmer, Jose Cisnero, healthy Kyle Funkhauser. The Detroit Tigers can absolutely make the postseason this year. And now your outfield of the future, not a one-year rental because you think you're ready to compete. Your outfield for at least the next three seasons is Austin Meadows, Riley Green, and Akil Badu with some pretty darn good fourth outfielders behind them in Derek Hill is it would be a fantastic defensive minded first fourth outfielder that can play any of those three positions. I'm riled up. Austin Meadows is a Detroit Tiger. I I don't want to end this. I want to keep talking about how awesome this is, but I have to end this because we're already over time. Give me some new odds, but online. Give me some new odds on the Detroit Tigers playoff chances. Update that. Update that. Because I think think it might be a little better now. And I'm not going to sit here. I I don't believe any one singular person can change uh, a, a team or an organization drastically enough to take them from like, oh, you know, you just went from fourth in the division to a playoff team. No, this team was already... Right there. This team already had the chance to have a competitive summer and fight for a a, a playoff spot, being that they added another playoff spot, especially uh, with with the new CBA. This team was already in that mix before half an hour ago. This team was already in that mix. Now, they might be a little bit more than just in the mix. Austin Meadows is a Detroit Tiger. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every day. Now make your second listen. Locked On MLB host Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right. We're going to wrap this up. We're done. I don't want to be I, I just want to sit here and talk to you about how awesome this is all night long. I'm just going to upload this immediately. This is just going to be, this is going up right away. Austin Meadows is a Detroit Tiger. He's playing with his brother Parker. He's not playing with him. He's playing the same organization as his brother. Three years of control. I mean, Austin Meadows is a Detroit Tiger. We'll see you all tomorrow, baby. We'll talk about it a little more. Peace and love. Going to therapy is dope. Oh, tomorrow's episode is actually, that's a lie. Tuesday's episode is uh, a roundtable discussion that was recorded a week ago before we got Austin Meadows, clearly. Uh, It's a roundtable discussion really cool with all of the AL Central locked on hosts. And we kind of just talk about current status of the AL Central, who's kind of favored, who's not. But in that conversation, the Detroit Tigers didn't have Austin Meadows. And in this one, they do. So I'll be back with more fresh content on Wednesday. Tomorrow's Tuesday's show will be that. And tonight's show, 
is Austin Meadows is a Detroit Tiger. I'm never going to stop saying it. What a move. What a day. I'm going to be at opening day. I'll see you there. Peace and love. Going to Therapy's Dope. I'll catch you all tomorrow, baby. Go Tigers.